This interview is going to be a lot of fun. We got Dana, who's about to come on in a bit, really going to bring the fire, bring the inspiration, helping you dial in your greatness, your wellness, your health, all that good stuff, and sharing with you her transformational journey. Before we get into that, though, I want to share about the sponsored message, and that is the 21-Day Challenge. If you're an entrepreneur, a high achiever, you're feeling stuck, overwhelmed, lost, you're not clear, um, you're lacking clarity, and you're just not tapped into that potential and that greatness that you know you're capable of, the 21-Day Challenge is a one-on-one -on -one accountability for 21 days straight where you get crystal clear on your long-term goals and dreams, break them down into bite-sized steps, dial in your daily routine so you're kicking butt, taking names, and succeeding like never before. That's the 21-Day Challenge. If you want to find out more, send me a message and uh, or email chris at beergps.com and let me know you're ready for your 21-Day Challenge. Thanks in advance. I'm looking forward to helping you break through. Next is the iTunes review of the week. And this week it's by Gina Pino. Gina says, totally inspired. Feeling so empowered every time I listen to this podcast. Binge listening all weekend. Thanks, Chris, for sharing your brilliance. Your genuine caring and enthusiasm is infectious, and it lifts me up each and every episode. You and becoming your greatest possible self is a gift. Thank you so much, Gina. I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing the, the feedback. And if you're out there listening or watching, you want to give us uh, a review, let us know how we're doing. Let us know what you want to see more of. Go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes or search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self on the iTunes store and you'll be able to find us there. Thanks so much in advance for doing that and letting us know what you love and what you want to see more of. So again, I'm about to bring on Dana. She's going to bring the fire Grab a pen, grab a paper, be ready to take notes because she is a powerhouse. She has incredibly, ridiculously awesome engagement on all her content and videos. She's inspiring. She's driven. She's energized. She has a beautiful, adorable little son. Oh my gosh. He is, he's he's, he's going to grow up to be an incredible man. I can feel it because she is a powerhouse mother and so many other amazing things. So what we're going to do is introduce Dana and then we will bring her on the screen so she can share with you about her greatness. So let me pull up that intro from her and just get ready. Get ready for the fire. This is going to be a lot of fun too. She's a lot of fun. Great energy. Dana Mistretta is the person you connect with when you are ready to cut ties with the conversations, behavior patterns, limiting beliefs, and habits that are no longer serving you. She is a committed, inspirational, impactful thought leader who is ignited by teaching others how to soar through humble service. One of Dana's greatest gifts is to provide her clients with permission to dream again and awaken their own possibility so that they may live a life of passion and purpose. Dana is an effective coach because she produces radical results in her own life. She is a classically trained artist with several works in photography, painting, and writing published nationally. She has an extensive background in education and is a published curriculum writer in the state of Florida, where she also founded a travel camp. Dana is a team isogenics athlete, earning three first place titles in fitness competitions, international cover model, coach, and group fitness trainer. One of her recent accomplishments that she is most proud of is leading three service teams over this last year that raised over $200,000, fed over 3,000 homeless people, and renovated a portion of a children's rehabilitation center. And we are blessed to have her here with us today. Dana, are you ready to rock this? I am ready to rock this. Yes, you are. You're rocking it live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom and, and just what you have created and cultivated, the lessons and coaching that you've developed. You are a superstar. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me on. Such an amazing introduction. I was getting fired up just listening to it. So that's right. still appreciate go, you. Go and back and listen to that. Listen to it over and over again. You're like, that's, that's me. That's me. That's me. <laughs> Right. Oh man. It. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, we always, you know, even in the, in the coaching space, that's why we have coaches. We draw on our own inspiration yeah. right. and seek, you know, to elevate each other. So yeah. try becomes really important who we surround ourselves with yeah. and those verbal affirmations. So you know, definitely. I love it. I love it, Dana. We're already starting off with the fire. You are on fire. So let's talk about the theme of the day, which is fight 
love, or both? Now, I created this question I wanted to ask each each of the guests on today of, do you feel like it's, it's like you have to fight your way to success, you have to survive your way to success, or is it just love your way to success? Is it just, you know, float your way and manifest your way to success, or is it both? And I want to hear how your perspective is on this particular topic. Wow, Chris, <laughs> that is... That is an amazing question. Um, and I can certainly speak from experience with this. Yeah. So my former, my old ways of being were mm. certainly um, achievement through the doing, yep. right? Through yep. putting in the hard work, through the fight, through the grind, um, mm. flexing the muscle over and over and over again, right? And really just, I found it was coming more from a, a forceful space. Mm. And for a female, it's coming more from a very masculine fit space, which yeah. is not my, my natural way of being right. right. I'm feminine. So right. being in my feminine grace is really the best way for me to be activated. Right. So I, especially, you know, when it comes to fitness and some of these areas is showing up with a lot of that masculine drive and the do, 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 do. Mm. And what I found through that is that a lot of the accomplishments that you mentioned, while they're great and amazing, some of them at the end of the day, uh, felt empty. Wow. felt empty because some of them did come through that competition, that fighting, that, that, that scrappling. Right. Mm. And, um, as of recently, you know, I've really been on a great journey of self-discovery. And as of recently, there's just been this major, major shift. And the shift has been really getting into that feminine grace and really mm -hmm. stepping into my ways of being and creating the, the win-win, right. Mm. And really waking up and realizing that, there are more people around us that while we're elevating and driving and, and moving towards the top, because goals are great, right? Goals are great. And we accomplish them through that drive. Mm -hmm. But as we're going and we're moving towards the top, it really takes a family, a team, and a tribe. Yeah. And if they're not winning, then you're not winning, mm. right? And you're yeah. celebrating those wins and those successes together. And if you're getting to the top and it's starting to get lonely and mm. lonely and lonely, there's um, some really good hints that things are out of alignment, right? Because wow. we get to the top of that mountain. How beautiful is the view when we could share in it and celebrate it with, with other people? And the only way that we get there is by elevating people along the way and just continuing to reach that hand down and bring people up and bring people up. So, you know, when they say it's, it's lonely at the top, it very well could be depending on your, your ways of getting there. Your story, your story about like, what's, what is it supposed to be? You know, if you believe that it's supposed to be lonely or like you said, the ways of, of getting there, if you, you know, aren't really connected to people and helping others around you and have that like servant service based mindset where you're, you're constantly, you know, serving the people around you and adding value and teaching what you learn and different things like that, then, you know, it will be lonely. But if you, have more of the family mentality, the team mentality of we all succeed together. And, you know, if my team isn't succeeding, then I'm not succeeding kind of thing. Then that that's a that's a it's a huge perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and just looking to create those those win wins. And mm. and it starts on the micro scale. It starts on the environment, you know, directly surrounding you. Am I creating mm. those win wins with my son? Am I creating those win wins in my co parenting situation? Mm. Am I creating them with my family? Right. So really looking at that closer internal structure, yeah. creating the wins there, because if you're not winning in your your business relationships, then chances are you're not winning in relationships in general. Right. Yeah. 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 It's it really connecting with people. I found that like business relationships, you, you get to be connecting with people and really caring about them and what they're up to. That's the only way it will keep going. You know, it's checking in with people, building those relationships, investing in those because like that's that's what really will carry the day. If you're just out for the transaction, then it's not going to not going to pay you those like long term, quote unquote, dividends of real deep relationships, meaningful relationships. And that's that's something that's that's been super important to me recently. Recently, you know, I'm like, I, I really get to build these relationships with people because we've interviewed 450 guests on the show. So it's like, it's, it's incredible. And like the width is great. I want to go deep. I want, I want deep, meaningful relationships. That's what I'm committed to. And, you know, I'd surround myself with people who do the same thing. So I, I love that you're, you're vibing on that, Dana. That's awesome. Yeah. Definitely. And thanks. That's a great question. And embracing the flow, embracing the surrender yeah. is really where I'm finding the most success and mm. where I'm finding my authentic self. Yeah. 
So in other words, I know Chris, you know, Chris and I chatted before just to, you know, sort things over, see if this was a match and where we're going to go with the show. And I said, you know, I'm really excited about being in free flow and Mm. not knowing what all the questions are. And that Mm. can be a scary space to to be in, right? Because the way of being before, right? And the doing have been totally scripted. And (laughs) Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to be here with you today. My name is Tina Mistretta, right? That's like that nice safe zone. It feels good. And then this is the surrender. So this is where your true self really comes forth. And it can be a little uncomfortable embracing that. But at the Mm. same time, that's where the the goodness is. That's where the richness is and the authenticity. And so, um, yeah, embracing those ways of being have just been amazing. And and the Mm. abundance on the other side of that. Yeah. Because like you said, it is a limiting belief, you know, that it's lonely at the top whatever you do and we hear that and we just were like oh yeah that's just the way it's got to be no that's that's not real Mm -mm. and it it is what story you write and what i found is exactly the opposite i love it i love it dana this is powerful so i want to dive into you a little bit more what do you what do you stand for i mentioned it in the um intro a little bit but what do you stand for what do your clients come to you for Hmm, i love that okay so um, I definitely work with people in, um, I want to say, in nourishing, nourishing mm-hmm. their lives, enriching their lives. So that starts with, with nutrition. Mm-hmm. So nourishing the body from within, what we're putting in our food, what we're, or what we're putting in our bodies, what we're fueling our bodies with yeah. is a big part of it. So mm-hmm. I'm a nutritional consultant. I support people on their nutritional journeys, taking a look at where they're at. And then really purging their environment. Mm. So in other words, what's got to go? Is it the sugar, the flour, the soda, the coffees? What are the things that are standing in the way from creating that end vision of having a healthy body, right? Mm. So we eliminate what's no longer serving. And then we bring in all of the good nutrition. And I also you know, put people through a detoxification process with the the system, the nutritional system that I use as well. Yeah. So not only are you detoxing what's in your physical environment, where you're also detoxing what's in your internal environment. Mm. And if you can imagine, you know, you have got to, if you're going to like paint, put fresh paint on a new wall, mm-hmm. you got to strip the paint first. Totally. Right? Totally. So that you can get maximum absorption. Well, your mm. bodies, our bodies work the same way. You just got to get rid of what's no longer serving us in the external environment in the physical environment, and then bring all that good stuff in. Right. Amen. So I love starting with nutrition because it's something you feel immediately. Yeah. Once you get that nutrition in your body, you're mm. like, Oh, my energy levels are going up. Mm. I'm sleeping. I'm in a better yeah. mood. I yeah. have more energy throughout the day. Like that is huge. I've got a yeah. 10 year old. Like, I thrive on energy, right? Yeah. So that comes from, <laughs> from the nutrition, right? And then the other, the other piece that we had mentioned before was really the, the relationships. Mm. And that is quality of life, right? Mm. Like when we look back, when we look back and we are on our deathbed, it's all about the memories. It's all about the experience. It's all about the people mm. whose lives we were a part of right? Who got to be part of our lives that we got to share that, that communion with. And if the quality of your relationships are suffering, maybe you don't have any relationships, maybe you don't have any close friends, Mm. then I really work with people um, as a relationship coach, right? Because the thing is, is that you come and you want to manifest a relationship, right? But if you're not already having great relationships surrounding you, Mm. then that palette needs to be wiped clean as well. So really looking into maybe friends, environments that aren't serving you, Mm. um, past memories, purging from past memories, releasing that, and then stepping into what does feel good, what does feel nourishing. You know, being around people like you and Petia, Mm. you know, who we fill each other up. We are only preaching, you know, providing love and support and seeing each other in our greatness. Like that's the circle that I stand for people to be around. That's the environment that I stand for people to be in. Hmm. So not only when it comes to their nutrition, but also when it comes to their social environment, it becomes really, really huge. Wow. So the end results um, are generally body transformation and relationship transformation. However, the work that gets to be done on the deeper surface is usually going through those steps of, of purging and really looking at the physical environment because mm. the physical environment yeah. is always the manifestation of the thoughts that are going on in your head. Mm. Yeah. And mm. as, as a coach and I've been in counseling with high school, so I've been, I've got this trained ear, right? When I'm hearing the words come out of someone's mouth, I could hear it right away. I'm like, Ooh, limiting belief. Okay. <laughs> that was a self-sabotage. Okay, that's a worthiness conversation because wow. I just heard themselves put themselves them put themselves down, right? Yeah, yeah. Hear the wording that's coming out of someone's mouth, mm. and right away you know that's tied to a thought. 
Mm. That's where it came from. It came from your thoughts. And if those limiting beliefs are no longer serving, we release them mm -hmm. and we write a new program. We write a new script. So that's really, um, you know, reprogramming all around. That mm. was a big <laughs> Boom. It's perfect. I love it. Going deep, Dana. I love it. Go I deep, love it. Going deep, going deep. It's, yeah. it's awesome. It's, <laughs> it's on fire. It's on fire. Okay. I love it. So this is awesome. And I want to get more into the, the, the nourishment, the nutrition, the relationships, because that is all fascinating. And before we get there, I want to dive back into the journey and talk about, you know, how you got to where we are today. Talk about some of those challenges that you had to grow through to become your greatest possible self with us today. How did you become a coach? You know, where did it all really begin for you? Wow. That's a, that's a big question. I yeah. feel as though I could probably write a book that went on like <laughs> for, this, for this long, right? So um, I remember writing in one of my Facebook posts that as you know, you see the accomplishments, right? Mm -hmm. But the pendulum swings equally in the, in the opposite direction. Mm. Not, not to forget that, right? That there's certainly a journey that you get to go through in totally. order to, to reap reap the benefits, so to say. Right. And, um, growing up, I had not the best relationship with myself. Mm. Right. So there was a lot of self-sabotage. I mm. went through stages of self-loathing, went through stages of cutting mm. of drugs, of alcohol. And I really hit a rock bottom in, in my early twenties and just fell into such a state of depression. Mm. Where I can remember, I mean, being like so, so low, I would never, ever want to wish this on another human being. And I can remember saying to my mom, I want to hurt myself or I want to hurt someone else. Yeah. That, that's when I knew that was my lowest moment because that wasn't my highest intention. Mm -hmm. And I knew it wasn't a match, but I didn't know what was hurting so badly inside of me. Right. And so to be able to, um, to voice that and to be able to reach out for support and that's really what started what started my journey. Um, mm -hmm. Being able to get that help, being able to get that support, and then realizing, you know, when I when I woke up, um, so to say, because I was in the hospital, right, and I kind of went through this traumatic experience. And when I woke up out of it, I realized that I had I had the option, and it was either live or die. Mm -hmm. And I was going to choose every day from the choice of life. And I went into this almost internal survival mode where. I did the same thing, similar as I said, was really took inventory to everything that was around me mm -hmm. and just kept making the steps towards life. So in other words, my food changed, right? The mm -hmm. people I hung out with changed. The music even changed, right? Mm -hmm. So the music I was listening to before, those weren't my anthems. Those weren't mm -hmm. serving me. I saw a different vision for myself. I just didn't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. But I knew that every day if I woke up and I chose life, that I could make the steps in that, in that direction. And through that, there has been so many different ups and downs. You know, I'm, I'm 38 years old. I've been divorced. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, there's, there's not smooth trails that are, that are in there. However, I've always just had this relentless vision, this mm -hmm. relentless vision to serve, to be a bigger service, and to really expand my platform in that way. And that mm -hmm. has always driven me. And, of course, you know, my, my son. Yeah. So, um, one foot in front of the other. Yeah. I would say one foot in front of the other. And then um, finding great coaches and great mentors. Mm. Like there are already so many exceptional people. And I didn't know them at the time. Mm. Like, mind you, I did not know my mentors at the time. But you know who I did know? Who? I knew Wayne Dyer. I yeah. knew Tony Robbins. Yeah. I knew Lisa Nichols. And if I wasn't getting it in my external environment, I could control my mm. environment, right? Yeah. So turning off the TV. I mean, I cable TV in my home for over 12 years, right? Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right? Just really paying attention to everything that, that is going in and, and coming through yeah. um, through me, right? And yeah. I have control over that. Right. And so that's, that's a part on, of your, that's a part of your environment, right? Like there's, yeah. there's the physical environment. There's, you know, the thoughts that you're, you're being imprinted with, whether it's, you know, the, the TV music, the people that you're around. And then there's also the physical environment of the nutrition that you put in your body. And so you took an inventory seeing, Hey, what are the things that are not serving me? How do I get those out of my life? How did you know what was serving you and what wasn't in those very beginning stages? How did you, how did you have the awareness to say this or that is not serving me, but this or that is? That's a great question. Um, so in that, in that pivotal moment, when I decided to choose life, um, I certainly, 
you know, turn my life over and really started to pray and really mm. started to ask for that guidance to ask for it. Mm. And it became this internal, this internal feeling. And I could feel it. I could feel it in the pit of my stomach mm -hmm. when I wasn't making choices that were in alignment. And I made plenty of them. I made plenty of them. I were in relationships that did not serve me. I was in mm -hmm. friendships that felt more like abuse, right? And mm -hmm. I could feel it right in the gut, right in that, um, right in your uh, root chakra, yeah. right? Yeah. You feel that when you're out of alignment. And when you're not feeling right, guys, if you feel this in your belly, if you feel a heaviness in your heart, if you feel the weight on your shoulders, mm. pay attention to that. Mm. Somewhere you're out of alignment. And you might not know exactly what your alignment is, right? Like I knew I had this vision. I'm still not there yet, right? I know that there's this vision, this greater, this greatest calling. And when you feel that not, you're not making a choice from that space. Mm. Truly not, right? Because when you make a choice that feels good, it's a clear yes. You jump up out of your seat. You can't wait to do it, right? Yeah. And even the working out, we know it serves our body. We know sometimes it can be like, oh, I got to go work out. But how great does it feel after? Yeah. Like no one works out after and is like, darn, I'm really upset I did that, you know? <laughs> your body internally knows. Yeah. And it comes down to that trust and trusting in yourself. And that also lives within that root chakra, mm. is the trust within yourself. Yeah. So you, so you mentioned that praying was a big part of you discovering like what served you and what didn't asking for guidance. Um, tell us a little bit more about your, the evolution of your career to be able to become a, a coach. Cause I know you had like the art background and, um, teaching like so many cool things. Tell us about that evolution. Sure. So, um, honestly, my heart was set on fire. I met Lisa Nichols. I was really blessed to almost about three years ago. And as soon as she crossed my path, I was like, that's it. Mm. That is it. Wow. And I was blessed to go to one of her coaching workshops. And then through that, that's where I found two of my greatest mentors. And now these are real life mentors, right? Yeah, so it was like, yeah. I was leaning on others. Yep. I still lean on a lot of others right. for sure. And then I met my two mentors, Zach and Eden Slobin, mm -hmm. which opened the doors for me to meet my next two mentors, uh, Jenna Phillips Ballard and her husband, Brad Ballard, who yeah. are absolutely amazing. And they created a program called the Ascension Leadership Academy out in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And it is an on the spot, rigorous training. And it's all developed around, around coaching and you really digging deep to become the best version mm -hmm. of yourself. So I went through the program and then was invited to come back and coach. So then I was able to coach the program and got um, a lot of guidance from Jenna and Brad. And now mm. Jenna is one of my close coaches. Um, I've supported some of her groups and then I do relationship coaching as well. So just kind of mm. all evolved. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned before, it really, you know, stemmed back from being in education and being a coach and being a trainer and being out there on the field. So I can see the physical body and make mm -hmm. the adjustments to create the results and get into that brain mm -hmm. pretty well. Mm -hmm. But going through Ascension and also coaching Ascension gave me so many more tools to mm -hmm. really be able to mm -hmm. listen to those conversations that are going on. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly, mainly the ego conversation, yeah. mainly the ego conversation. And, um, I know you asked about the the spiritual journey as well. And mm. that that has certainly been a walk. Mm. It's been a walk. And it's been a walk that I've been committed to, even though at times I don't understand the the results. I don't understand some of the directions in which I've been led in, right? However, on the other side, there's always been just so many miracles, so mm. many miracles, so much magnet magic and so much magnificence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to want to like sink into that a little bit. That's that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Getting present to that, you know, that it's always it's always around us, guiding us. You know, God, universe, source, creator, whatever we want to call it, is always guiding us. And just to like take a second and like kind of release some of that tension, release some of that holding on and control, and saying, "But I think it's supposed to be like this," <laughs> you know, like. Just oh like, right. Oh no, my plan's better. <laughs> I was I was gonna do that, right? And he's like, no, 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 you're not. You know? <laughs> and as soon as like if you keep walking in that direction, that's where the not 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 and you're like something, I gotta let go of something. Yeah. Right? Yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. So, you know, really in terms of creating your best self, I, I believe that is gonna start with 
designing your environment, knowing what's holding you back, knowing what those those toxic sources are in your life. Is there anything else that you really feel is an important part of becoming aligned with who we're meant to be, our, our greatest possible self, our best self? Loving yourself. Mm. Loving yourself. And that's the hardest journey. I mean, mm. I came from you know, my teens of I'm literally self-loathing, cutting myself, wanting to be physically out of my body, right? Mm. And we hear that a lot, self-love. And how, how do you do that? Mm. How do you wake up every morning and love yourself? And for some people, they're like, oh my gosh, I love myself, right? Mm -hmm. But yet someone gives you a compliment and you deflect it. Mm -hmm. You don't receive it, right? Or, um, you know, it comes up in conversation and, oh, I hate when I do that. There's a lot of negative self-talk. Mm. Well, someone who loves themselves can receive a compliment. Someone who loves themselves doesn't talk negatively to themselves, mm. right? Someone who loves themselves works out. Yeah. Someone who loves themselves puts good nutrition into their body. They take mm. care of their hair. They take care of their nails, right? Not mm. only the internal, but also the physical. Mm -hmm. So if those things are a mismatch, then, then where can you receive more self-love? And a lot of the key is, is in self-care, mm -hmm. really finding the things that make you come alive, mm -hmm. not your neighbor, not your mother, not your mother or your father or your brother or your sister, the things that nourish you. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, Chris, I was denying for a really long time was painting. Mm. And I love to paint and I love to write. And I listen to some external critics, some of my own internal critics, and I shut it down. Right. And I realize that by me shutting that down, that's a part of myself that I'm not loving. I'm not loving. I'm ignoring it. I'm avoiding it. Yeah. I've got this little girl inside of me, this creative artist who's like, hey, come out and play every yeah. day. And I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, can I build a snowman? I'm like, no, we can't build a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not loving myself. I'm not honoring myself. If I'm not bringing my truest self forward, if I'm not in mm. creative expression, if I'm not in exploration wow. and self, you know, self love really stems from not only just, you know, that, that radical self care and self acceptance, but then also being in appreciation. There's a train going through. <laughs> it's like the universe is like, Hey, pay attention to this. <laughs> Being in appreciation for everything that you are, mm. everything that you are, because we focus so much on what this person has, what that person has, what they look like. I did it myself. Heck, I didn't even, I'm on the cover of a fitness magazine, never put the cover out there because I compared myself to other fitness models, wow. right? That self-comparison game. Mm. Oh, constantly, you know, looking at, at everything else instead of looking in the mirror, yeah. Looking in the mirror, what is right in front of you and really being in gratitude and appreciation of everything that you are. And that really comes, what I found is that really comes with celebrating the wins daily. Mm -hmm. like at the end of the day, where am I winning? Not what did I not do? Where can I celebrate the wins? The mm -hmm. wins is that I put a hot meal on the table for my son, Right. And that I got to, you know, take him to the movies where maybe a few years ago, that might have been a stretch, mm. right? Um, I get to celebrate that I, I got to be with my girlfriend today and have lunch with her and move her. I got to move my girlfriend across, you know, the state out to, Air, to California from Arizona and pack up a U-Haul. There's so much to celebrate, right? Yay. <laughs> That's what I'm in Arizona or California. See? <laughs> So celebrating, celebrating your wins and celebrating yourself, no matter how big or small they mm. are. Yeah. Um, and the, the positive self-talk, I do affirmations every single day. Yeah. I am beautiful. I'm magical. I'm source. I'm infinitely abundant. I am universal. I am happiness. I am joy. I am mm. love. Because if you can pour that light in, then the darkness doesn't have a choice. It doesn't have an option. Mm. It doesn't live in fear or separation of. Right. What do you think is the biggest challenge for people to adopt these habits of self-care, self-love, celebration, affirmations? I, okay, so the hardest one is forgiveness. Mm. Is forgiveness, is working through forgiveness. Mm. And that's a journey. 
because there's the forgiveness of other people in the external world. And then there's the forgiveness of self. And that one can be the most challenging. And I love that you asked that, Chris, because, you know, you asked me last week before we did this. <laughs> She's about to drop a truth bomb. <laughs> She's about to throw it down. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Where's the gold? She'll be right back. I can feel it. I can feel it. She's like, I need to share this. I need to share this. This there's too much gold here. <laughs> Would love to hear what your biggest takeaway is. And um if you have a uh um a share that you want to share this with people, definitely do that right now. And let's play the fast GPS game for you if you're out there. First person to respond will get entered into a drawing to win a book for the day. Let's do it. I see Janice out there. Who else is out there? We got Ricardo, we got Samir, we got Jacqueline. Jacqueline Wynn, oh my gosh, I haven't talked to you in ages, girl. If you're still out there. Let's see. Dana, by the way, my name is not Dana Mistretta. <laughs> I'm going to text her, are you okay? <laughs> are you, like the letter R, are you okay? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Trying to get back. We're doing it. We're doing it, peeps. We're doing it. That's so. Yay! Okay, I think I'm back, but I'm upside down. Apparently, my my um, apparently my computer wasn't charging. So <laughs> yeah, we're back. Committed. Oh my gosh, I love it. I was like, Dana's about to drop a truth bomb. Go on. I know, I know, I know. I know. I'm still, I'm still plugged in though, mentally plugged in. <laughs> Let's go. Let's bring the fire, girl. We got this. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, last week when you had asked me, what's, you, you asked me, you said, what's your message that you're really looking to bring forth in, in 2019? And I, you know, I had no idea at the time. And, and love is always what comes up for me, love, right? Mm. And I said, it's, it's a self-love, right? Mm. And, and because you asked me that question, you really cracked it open for me, Chris. Like, really, really, because it was on my mind all week long. Mm. And on Saturday, when we were at, actually it was Friday, on Friday when we were, I was at um, a work event and mm -hmm. I should have been focusing on work, but I'll tell you the, the Holy Spirit has a way. Yep. And I provided with this book, mm. a book. And I, I wrote out all the chapters on. Wow. How to, yeah. Like a literal how to book, how to mm. really love yourself and provide that self love. Because I realized that I've had so many great mentors and you know, they say stand on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. Well, I am so blessed that I get to bow at the feet of some queens. Mm. And I, I sit at the feet of these queens and I take notes mm. and they, they allow me, you know, they give me all of this great information. And I really feel like I've been on a training course over the last few years where I've been putting all of it into play. And now I'm just finally getting into that sprint, right? Mm. So it's kind of just like I was walking and I started to jog <laughs> a little bit. And now I'm really running with it. Yeah. And um, yeah. through, you know, the, the things, the practices that I've picked up and they're practices of very successful women, mm. very successful women when it comes to creating next level relationships, you know, with their with their kings, when it comes to being amazing in their businesses, being amazing in their bodies. And so I'm writing this book on how to put the practices into play. And I have all of the chapters. And at the end, it's, it's about, it is about bringing the love into the world, but really finding your own freedom. Hmm. Why, why really finding, find, why finding, finding your own freedom? freedom? Why is, why is that important? Hmm. Cause when you have that, you have that radical self-love, right? Mm -hmm. The self-acceptance, the self-awareness, the the self-care, the forgiveness piece, the forgiveness piece. I'll stress that again. The forgiveness piece. <laughs> then you're free. You're free. What people say about you, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? 
what your creative gift is to bring forth in this world, you realize that it serves, it serves, and it might not serve you, and it might not serve my neighbor, but you know what? The guy five blocks down is like, give me some of that, Yep. right? Yep. And so that, that state of freedom allows us to, to be our, our ultimate selves, the greatest totally. expression of self, yeah. for yeah. sure. Wow. Mm-hmm. So powerful. So it's like the, the freedom of self-expression is really what we all want to be ourselves, to be, to, to channel our creative, our creativity, you know, like you have, you have so much experience with creativity and also, you know, helping people to share what's important to them, right. In in your teaching, like you drew that out of, of your students and the people who you were around, like you drew out like, Hey, what is it that you really wanting to say here? Hey, I have a, a an idea idea, a picture, you know, you were practicing your self-expression, your ability to impart an idea or a vision or, you know, a feeling or emotion or a story or a lesson, wisdom, whatever it was. So it's like your whole life, you've really been mastering that dialogue of expression and connection and creation. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, and when I really started to dig into the chapters, when they started to come to me, um, it was interesting because I laid them all out and I have them written down here just to kind of go, go through it. And mm-hmm. once again, at the end is the, the freedom, mm-hmm. right? Cause we kind of like mm-hmm. always reverse engineer. So it's like freedom and love are at That's the right. end. That's right. And then we start at the top. Well, it starts with self-acceptance. So like loving mm-hmm. where you're at. And mm-hmm. then there's humility that comes with that. Like when you accept where you're at, sometimes there could be a lot of humility. And as I said, relying on other mentors, other coaches, other professionals and that's mm. humbling yeah it is so humbling to raise your hand and be like hey you know what i am you know 30 years old i'm just getting out of a divorce and guess mm. what i don't have it all together can mm. someone please help me yeah right like, yeah yeah right that's gold that's gold and, and also yeah. also you you are surrounding yourself with such powerful people so you can ask for that help you know it's like some people are like i don't know who to ask i don't know where to go and, and they are in a life full of toxic relationships more so than empowering, uplifting, you know, legendary goddesses like that you're you're around, right? And and it's it can be difficult for them to get a hold of these powerful people. But like you, when you started, you were leveraging the the mentorship from afar, you know, audio books and and videos and um, you know podcasts and seminars and different stuff like that to really learn as quick as quick as you could. One hundred, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. So mm-hmm. you you have this book process, you know, the chapters written out. What would you say is has like been something you've learned since you started writing out the chapters and this was like this is a download, you know, coming to you? So this is this is the biggest one, Chris. Um what drew me, I knew at the beginning I wanted to write something about Martin Luther King. And mm. because I found out the highest the highest elevation is freedom, right? And I yeah. knew that that was gonna be like the the whole, you know, opening up of the book, so to say. And I saw this great Martin Luther King quote out in California when I was traveling. And there's like a wall with uh, seagulls that he's setting free. And there's like rainbows. Mm. And the quote is just so beautiful. And it's about freedom. And I was like, that's what I'm going to start my book off with. Now, Mm. here's the amazing, amazing part is I go and I open up Martin Luther King quotes to find that one quote, which I still haven't found yet. But I'm going (laughs) to drive on the highway. I'm going to get it while I'm on this trip. (laughs) So anyways, I don't find the Martin Luther King quote that I'm looking for, but what I do find is that I can apply one of his quotes to every single chapter that I have written out. Wow. So to start every chapter, I'm going to start with a Martin Luther King quote. And why, why I, I know it's like crazy. And why I love Martin Luther King is because he's a visionary. He's a visionary who just kept speaking into his dream over and over and over and over again. Mm. And guys, he never really saw the vision manifested, but we're all living it today. Like, I really want you to get that. Mm. He never saw all of this come to fruition, right? But he led so many people. He created the momentum. He lit all the fires. He got it started. Mm. And like, that's what's alive today. That's what's alive today. And that is so inspiring. That's why, you know, I want to, or I get to be a committed, inspirational, impactful leader in my life because I see what that work can do, Mm. you know, and especially in the classroom, working with children and igniting their souls and being able to pass that, that down and pass that along and letting them know that the gifts that they have are truly all the gifts that, you know, they were brought into this world, but they don't need anything else. Mm. 
Uh, we don't need anything else. We you know, you know what I else. I love mm-hmm. about uh, Martin Luther King is his impact is so epic, right? Mm. And I love that you are like, hey, I'm I'm committed to that. I'm committed to that level of impact. I'm committed to that level of legacy. And I love that you're tapped into that energy because that is like what a what a pure, powerful, empowering, you know, spiritual God, like God connected source to study and to into role model. And I'm just so excited about the impact that you get to create with that as your guiding compass, Dana. That's that's really amazing. Mm-hmm. And I, I wanna I wanna go down the road, so to speak, of time, and it's 50 years from now, and 50, 50. <laughs> and because, you know, if, yeah. if it was like Martin Luther King, I think it was like 50, 60 years ago, right? Yeah. And we get to see like the type of legacy that he created. What do you see as the legacy that you would create? And there's no pressure. It's like, hey, if you if you had a paintbrush, what would you paint? Mm. What feels good? I love that. Such a great question. And, you know, when you say that, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'd be like 80, 90. And, um, <laughs> I, I what it, where my mind goes, Chris, is that I had the opportunity to to have that in my family. My mm. grandmother was such a torchbearer and she lit the way for so many others. She mm. I mean, I could go into all the amazing things that my grandmother did. And that that has always been a huge guiding light for me. And she was very strongly um connected to, to God and to spirit. Well, well, well and, before you jump over this, yeah. tell us a little bit more. Tell us the, uh, so, so, okay. some of the okay. things. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's amazing. So she was born in 1907, uh-huh. 1907, right? Wow. And she was a PE teacher for 40 years. Wow. She got a scholarship in the 1920s when women really didn't get scholarships. So she was very intellectual mm-hmm. and she got a scholarship to play women's basketball. Ooh. Yep. So wow. an athlete as well. Yeah. And what my grandmother did was she actually coached one of the women who started the WNBA. What? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and my grandma okay. is like as humble as pie, right? So wow. when the WA like first launched, they had a they had you know a, this acknowledgement dinner. They invited my grandma. Grandma didn't even tell us. What? Grandma didn't even tell us. What? The basketball player, you know, who started it, went back and found my grandmother and acknowledged her, you know, for for sparking the love of basketball. Yeah. So I knew then uh-huh. what impact one person could have. Even a school teacher from Fort Lee, New Jersey, right? Uh-huh. And you know, till the day she died, a hundred years old, she could probably tell you every student's first name, last name, their grandmother, their brother, where they ended up going to school, who they married. Dang. And she just had that, that connection, you know, mm. you walk in town with grandma and she's, she's a celebrity. Everybody knows Rose Mistretta. Wow. And yeah, that to me was just utter, utter inspiration. And then also she went back to school and um, she was in Panza. Panza was the college, and it's now Seen Hall Prep at the time. Mm, so she wow. went back to school, and when she graduated, she's one of the oldest living graduates. So when my friends graduated from Seton Hall, my friends, because I went to school out in New Jersey, she led the graduation procession. So wow. I got to push my grandmother. She was in a wheelchair at the time. Through the, like, leader, like, the first one down the aisle. And there she is in the wheelchair, like a queen. <laughs> to everyone, right? And I was just like, okay, got it. That's what lives in me, right? Wow. That's what lives in me. That is true inspiration. Man, amazing, mm-hmm. amazing! I love that. That's so powerful, and and that's that's the gold, really. Like when you can share things like that, that is so empowering. You know, when you when you share your lineage that she was an athlete, that she helped coach the woman who started the the WNBA. You know, that's that's epic. That's epic. The type of legacy that that creates. Yeah, and and like to put things in perspective, the WNBA didn't exist, and I loved basketball. Yeah, and it was like yeah. if you don't know that you can take it to a next level, then it's mm. like, what are you playing for? And I, mm. I don't mean to say it like that, but it's like, what's the end game? So, I mean, I chose mm. academics over, over sports because I didn't see that vision. And now look, mm. you know, yeah. women have that in, mm. in so many different areas. And she was one of those renegades. 
I she, love it. she stood for religious beliefs and stuff like that too um, when it came to her faith and she's yeah. got a, a million different crazy stories which is awesome wow that's so incredible yeah. like like my grandpa he was a um a motivational coach as well he went into like businesses and was doing consulting different stuff like that so it's cool how it like runs in the family you know like it it, mm-hmm. it passes on to the next generation it's it's awesome so i do want to hear about your vision of 50 or 60 years from now loved hearing about your grandma and and the future, Dana, paint that picture for us. What oh, is that? I love that. Okay, so I have I have several guests that I'm really working on on bringing about and bringing forth into the world. So it's interesting that this is like this is gonna this is going to be the first book because I have written books in the past. Mm. I never brought them through, published them. This is going to be the first one, and then I have a, a children's book that mm. I'm going to publish as well. Yay. My vision is my vision is speaking. I really mm. see myself on stage. I really see myself being a motivational breakthrough trainer. Um, my vision for myself with my nutritional company is certainly very big. Um, we have lots of great leaders within our industry, mm. and I see myself being one one of those powerful and impactful leaders mm-hmm. in, in our health and wellness company as well. Um, and then my artwork, mm. my artwork, like that is the gift that I, I bring everywhere I go. And I had, I had this vision when I was younger to create this, um, this store, this gallery called in my travels where mm. I go to different places all across the globe. And I really get to know the artists and I bring their artwork back and tell their story so that someone who goes shopping can not only take the item, but they can also take something about the culture mm. or the artist with them. And recently I'm like, no, I get to do that. I yeah. get to go different places. I get to be the one with the story. I get mm. to create the paintings, right? Yeah. Like, and I thought like that was just a really neat shift. And now I'm doing that. So when I go places, I just really ground into the environment that I'm in and bring forth the energy that I feel flowing through my body. And showing up to the canvas, not with, you know, the plan to draw the landscape or the bird or the this or the that. Like for me, it's, it's, it's an energetic, emotional experience. Yeah. And the more places that I go, um, I'm finding ways to, you know, bring paint, to bring the natural elements in and mm. to create on the fly. So that's something that I'm really super duper pa- passionate about in the now. Yeah. And I know it sounds like I've got my hands in a lot of different places. Uh-huh. That's just the way I operate. And that's yeah. the way that I've always operated. Yeah. Um, multi-passionate, you know? multi-inspired. multi the, the creativity flows through you in so many different ways. I think that that's, that's brilliant because you can take inspiration from all these different places. And I want to, this is all like cr- being created in, in the now and things that you're mm-hmm. you know evolving and, and feeding life into in the now. It's 50 or 60 years from now, right? Mm. What's the legacy that is living on in Dana's name, in your family's name, because of the art, because of the teaching, because of Mm. the self-love? What types of communities exist? What type of impact has been created? What what is the 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 meaning and the significance of your life? What kind of um, you know presence of God is in the hearts of the, the people who are closest to you and the people who learned from you and and grew from you? Take us there. Mm, I love that leaders who wake up every day leading, leaning into the light. Yeah, leaders yeah. who wake up every day leaning into the light and choosing the light mm-hmm. and knowing that it starts from from them the moment they put their feet on the floor that they are the power they are the impact they are the change and that they take that torch with them wherever they go and it's their job it's their their duty it's their responsibility to be courageous mm-hmm. and to shine that light even in the darkest of places as scary as it can be if you bring the light in the dark cannot exist there mm-hmm. I love it. So I see communities of these light workers. I see, you know, you creating certification programs, courses, speaking, you know, events all around the world teaching this, creating centers, creating communities that share this and empower these light workers to go out and you have the the empowerment, the passing on of knowledge because you recognize how much you have learned from the people who came before you. And so you do that same thing. You have models, you have structures, you have systems and things in place to pass on the wisdom and the information, especially there's a ton of creativity. So you empower them all to be free in their creative expression, self-expression and who they're being and becoming. So that is 
you know, just the, the rough sketch. And you yes. get to refine that. You get to pour energy into the parts of that that inspire you. And go there more often. Go stand in that place 50, 60 years from now, 10, mm -hmm. 20, 30 years from now, whatever feels and resonates the most with you. And stand in that place and like sit in that energy of what you've accomplished. Because it's like that. That's what Martin Luther King did. He, he stood mm -hmm. in the vision of 50 years from back then of what would be possible of how people, you know, could be treated. And he mm -hmm. like, he, he spoke from that place. He spoke from that place of acceptance and love and, you know, probably even farther, probably even further ahead of today, right? His, his vision yeah. was beyond today. It's like even more than what is happening today. Cause there's still injustices. There's still stuff going on. So it's like his vision carries so much further than we can even imagine. And so you get to train yourself in being a visionary and, and, you know, speaker into existence so that people are like stoked to, to follow you and join you on the journey. And, learn what you what you know and and i don't want to say be like a loyal follower but be someone who loves being led by dana because you have that capacity and mm. it's it's so so you know apparent to to me and i know everyone who's around you is like they they say they love you they say you're you're amazing and your heart leads the way and and they just feel so good around you so it's like mm. that's that's what you get to create in the people around you and and own it Mm, thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Thank you so much for seeing that for me. You're welcome. And um, yeah, the ability to to see beyond it. And you're and you're right. I love that you're calling me forth to stretch into into that vision. Yeah. And it's an uncomfortable space because the uncomfortable space is Chris. Like in in my years of education, mm -hmm. that's where the the reformation gets to take place. Yeah. That's where these lessons get to get passed down. I mean, when we can teach this to our children, mm -hmm. this work, emotional intelligence, self-love, self-care, community, contribution, things that really matter, mm -hmm. right? Of course, like the education, of course, but why not all of it? Like, yeah. why, why are we, why are we playing safe? and not mm. going through hitting the home run with, with, with our children, with our public education system. And I know it's, it's a sticky, it's a sticky web. It's a sticky web and everyone, no one wants to get into it. Mm. You know? Yeah. yeah. But you do. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. There's, there's more that I get to learn. And that's like the, that's totally. the interesting part is it, as it evolves. I'm really excited. We have a children's program through Ascension Leadership Academy that's going to that's be starting awesome. out here in San Diego. And one of my visions is to facilitate that program so that I can mm -hmm. learn more mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the emotional intelligence piece and how to bring that into schools. Because we're, we're already taking away the PE. We're already taking the arts. And I write mm -hmm. curriculum regarding those two topics, right? And now I really want to be able to bring in like more of the holistic approach mm -hmm where it's the whole brain, the whole body, the spirit and soul learning in school, not an, a, a religious affiliation or anything like that. Mm. It's just really realizing that the kingdom is within and all the glory is within and the gifts are within. Love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Dana. So, so beautiful. This is awesome. Um, what you're, what you're creating, who you're being in the world right now, it's absolutely, absolutely inspiring. So let's focus on, um, the biggest takeaways that you want people to to receive from this and to integrate back into their lives because of this interview, because of their time invested with us today, like what is the difference that you really want to see them making and how they want how how you want how you invite them to show up because of this interview? Hmm. The invitation would be honestly just what 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 Chris just did to stretch yourself into what's possible for you to stretch yourself into what's possible in your life and really see that vision, that vision for yourself. Because what, what I see for myself is totally different mm -hmm. than what Chris sees for himself. Mm -hmm. So really stretch yourself into, into that vision, have that, that longer point of view, and then start reverse engineering and go back to yourself, checking in on your nutrition is my nutrition in balance? Is my environment in balance? Are my relationships in balance? Mm. Am I giving more than I am receiving? Mm. Or am I receiving more than I'm giving? Really coming back to that self and giving it a good evaluation as to where, where you're at. Mm. And then every day moving forward towards the vision of who you are becoming 
right? And where you're going, where your GPS dial is said to, as you would say. Absolutely. I love it. I love it, Dana. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. So our audience definitely wants to stay connected with you. They want to know how they can continue their journey with you. How do they do that, Dana? So I'm on Facebook. (laughs) I am on Instagram as Dana Mastretta. Love it. I keep my name consistent and all the same. Uh, People can reach out, you know, to me through, through messenger, through social media, for sure. Hmm. I'm not going to give out my phone number, Chris. (laughs) because <laughs> you're taken right you're taken so, now <laughs> I, i'm ready yeah I'm, I'm off the market so yeah. <laughs> i love it it's I not love facebook it. official yet but it's official yeah. it's it's in, in your heart and in your soul official that's that's what absolutely counts. yeah that's beautiful yep. i love it i love yeah. it dana well thank you so much for coming on today i'm so excited to see your vision come to life your book your impact in the education system in children's lives and your son oh my gosh he is like he has the greatest role model to look up to thank you can yeah. i share something here yeah yeah Okay, I want to celebrate this win. So um, my son, the other day, I found out that Mm -hmm. his school selected him to be an ambassador for their Mandarin program. So he's going to Washington, D.C. in a leadership program over the summertime. Oh, my God. I know. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Wow. I'm so excited for him. Wow, that's incredible. He's starting out like that leadership mindset and energy and opportunities being, you know, awarded to him at such a young age. That's incredible, Dana. It's it's yeah. totally a product of your philosophy imparting on him, your parenting, your love, your, you know, leadership, your empowerment of him to believe he can do anything he sets his mind to. That's so incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Chris. You're yeah, welcome. That's, that's the playground we live in. So that's right. It's, it's great to see. And he made the all-star team for hockey. So I, I get to be that mom who gets to, you know, float all over their kid for a minute. Yes. Yes. I love it. Own it. Own it, girl. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. <laughs> awesome. Dana, life. keep shining. Keep transforming people's lives. Keep being your greatest possible self. We appreciate you being here. Thanks so much. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you. You're awesome. amazing. We'll see you soon, okay? Okay. Bye.